What is going on guys little dog dog here today I'm bringing you a up-to-date quest guide for diamond in the rough This quest is one of the first in the line toward unlocking Menifus, which is One of the best skilling areas for mid-level players now This is a one-to-one -one quest guide so you can follow along as I do the quest do everything as I do it And we'll finish up at the same time if you like this video be sure to leave a like subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment down below if you have any tips trips or just want to leave some feedback uh, but yeah that's enough shilling let's get into the video so the only requirement for this quest is going to be that you complete the stolen hearts quest which is just immediately prior to this one really doesn't have any requirements either so you can just go right from doing that quest to doing this quest and it doesn't take that long and the only things I'd recommend for this quest are that you bring combat equipment because there, you are going to have to engage in some combat. And if you are a low level, bring some food because you, you could potentially take damage during this quest and it'll be a little bit of damage and you could die if you're like brand new to the game. To start the quest, you're going to want to go to the Al Karad Palace and talk to Osman who is located on the bottom floor. So talk to Osman, who can be found standing near the pole here on the ground floor. And it's going to give you the option to accept the quest. So accept the quest. And once you get done talking to Osman, he tells you to go find Ozan, who's standing just outside the palace. So go ahead and run north to the entrance of the palace. Talk to Ozan, and Ozan is going to be like, hey dude, what's going on? Uh, we need to get Prince Ali back because he was, was captured, so let's figure out how to do that. So once uh, you get through that dialogue there, you're going to be placed into the treasure chamber here where the scales are from Stolen Hearts, and inside it will be you, Ozan, and Osman. Osman's going to tell you that the way to find Prince Ali is by using the carrot ip. And basically what it comes down to is he's telling Ozan to steal the carrot ip. He doesn't tell you really to do it. And he, and Ozan's like, we already did steal it. And he's like, you didn't really steal that one. That was the one that we wanted people to steal. And, and what it ends up being is that the heavyweight from Stolen Hearts is actually the carrot ip. This is a really long cutscene though for having just said all that. So I'll catch you when the cutscene's over. All right, so once Osman leaves the room, Ozan will tell you to go get the heavy weight from the hat scales. So inspect the hat scales in the center of the room. Your character will grab the heavy weight, and then you're going to want to climb the rope in the room just south of Ozan. Now this is going to place you up on the roof of the Elkerid Palace. And from right here where you come out, you're going to want to run to the northwest to the side of the roof. This is just across from the bank. Now click on the edge of the roof and select drop off. You'll drop down and then Ozon is going to follow you down. And then once he's down, you're going to want to click on the rope and select shimmy across. Ozon will follow. You can't do anything until he actually comes across. And now you're going to want to parrot drop off the rug just to the south here. You go first. Ozan is second. And once he joins you, he tells you it's time to head to the desert. So you want to go to the Shanty Pass. So run south and then enter the Shanty Pass, but don't go into the desert just yet.
once you arrive in the pass, talk to Shani, who's going to be standing near the desert entrance. And he'll give you a nice warning about going into the desert, but he starts acting really strange, and it seems like he's been possessed. Um, he's saying, like, don't take me, bring me back, take me back where I go. And what actually is occurring is that the Carrot Ib has possessed Shanty. Uh, Shanty, because he knows you're going to go out there anyway, provides you with some water skins. And once the dialogue is done here, we can go through the desert by clicking on the Shanty Pass. Now, once you're in the desert, you're going to get this cutscene here. Where you guys are discussing how weird Shanny was acting. And during this dialogue, you're just going to choose the fourth chat option because... You know, you could keep talking, but just say, let's keep going. As soon as you say, let's keep going, the carrot ib is going to make a really loud noise and a sundial is going to appear nearby. Well, then I'll tell you to look at it and it would appear that the carrot ib is guiding you through the desert like Osmond said it would. So we're going to start by inspecting the sundial. And then that's going to bring up this interface right here. Now, you're going to want to click on the outer ring to align the dial to the symbol of Het. You can see as you go around the outer of the ring, it lights the, the outer ring up yellow. Click on the one that will align the sundial ring with the human face. Now, once you do that, the sundial is going to actually point you in a direction. You can see that the ray of light is pointing to the southwest, and we want to follow that. So run southwest to the next sundial, which is the direction the beam of light is pointing. You can actually see the sundial. It's, it's not too far away. Once you get to it, this cutscene here is going to trigger. And you're going to see that several bandits and a bandit leader show up and ambush you, basically. Now, it's my belief that this is going to be different if you're a hardcore Iron Man or you are not. I did this on a hardcore Iron Man, so the um, combat didn't start immediately. But I remember doing this on my main, the combat did start immediately. So, inspect the sundial once that cutscene ends. And Ozan will ask you if you're ready to fight. Say yes. And then it's time to fight all the bandits here. They die really easily, um, like they're really low leveled and, and easy to hit. And you just need to kill all of them. Once you kill the last one, he's going to drop a sundial Noman. And you want to pick up that Sundial Noman and use it on the Sundial. As soon as you pick it up, you are going to get a cutscene and dialogue back here with Ozan where he's like, he can't believe that they would be ambushed in the middle of the desert and that it kind of seems like the Karadab is trying to get you killed. But once that dialogue's over, use it on the Sundial. Inspect the repaired Sundial now and then click on the outer ring to align the dial to the symbol of Atmakin, which is the monkey. Once you've done that, close the interface and you'll get a new beam of light, this time pointing you to the northwest. After the dialogue here, you're going to want to run northwest and follow that beam of light to the next sundial. Uh, this one's a little further away and it's not as clear. You just need to run to the highlighted area on the minimap. So you can see I actually ran past it a bit here. It was just to the east. So. Now we get to the fun part of the quest. Once you're standing on this part of the sundial here, the cutscene's going to trigger and the carrot ib is going to, you know, put off another sonar. I, I don't really know how to describe it. And it's going to turn the sand under you into quicksand. You and Ozon begin to be sucked into the quicksand and absolutely cannot get out. So you're kind of screwed.
Um, eventually, you're going to be presented with a variety of dialogue options for what to do and how to get out. Just pick all of them because none of them are going to work. And as you pick them, you go further in the quicksand and eventually you'll be sucked into the cave down below. So you fall through into the cave down below and you're going to both be kind of dazed and see that the carrot ib has fallen out of your inventory. Uh, before you can move, a little scarab is going to walk in, roll up the carrot ib in his little dung ball and leave again. Now that's not really the most convenient thing when you need the carrot ib to find Prince Ali. But Ozan suggests that you, you know, look around for it. Maybe you'll find it, right? Right. He says you should also try and find the Noman because it'll navigate because the sundial actually happens to be down here in the cave. So once the dialogue's over, you're going to just want to enter random tunnels until Ozan tells you you don't have to anymore. So there is no specific order you need to enter these in. You can just click on any tunnel. Your character will come out another random tunnel. And you could even enter the tunnel you just came back out of. Uh, I believe you do this three times and Ozan will stop you. Because he's actually realized that he's he's sitting on the sundial of Noman. So he's going to repair the sundial and then you're going to want to inspect it. And once again, click on the outer ring, this time to align the symbol of Krondus, which is the crocodile. After that, talk to Ozan. And he's going to suggest that you follow the beam of light once again, because it can probably direct you out of the caves. So enter the tunnel the beam of light is pointing toward. And this is going to be a very long tunnel you have to run down. So just run all the way to the west to the end of the tunnel. And once you reach the end of the tunnel, enter the next tunnel entrance. So you're going to get put into this room, uh, this dark room at first, but Ozan will light it up. And you're going to see that there are just hundreds of dung cow fights rolling around and you have no idea which one could be in the carrot ib. Or which one could have the carrot ib. Um, basically, your best choice is to just slash at them. Not actually, until you find the carrot ip, right? No. Once that dialogue's over, uh, you need a slashing weapon equipped. If one is not equipped, there is a nearby bronze scimitar on the ground you can use. Um, so we're going to want to start by slashing open three dung calphites. Any three. And then after you slash open the third, Ozan is going to mention that he thinks he can hear or see the sparkling of the diamonds in the calphites. Uh, the ones that are shining and have a sound to them are the ones that contain the carrot ib. So you now have to kill four sparkling calphites. Uh, the first three that you kill are going to contain lesser gems than a diamond. So you got your sapphire, your ruby, and your emerald. And then the fourth one you kill that contains the uh, sparkling will contain the carrot ip. So you can see what one looks like right here. The one I'm clicking on, that one dropped the emerald because it's the second one I killed. While I'm here trying to pick up the emerald, I see the other one which will contain the ruby. And then I immediately see the next one which is going to contain the carrot ib. 
As soon as the, you pick up the carrot ib, it's going to trigger another cutscene. It won't actually allow you to pick up the ruby that quick or the other things that have dropped until after the cutscene if you picked up the carrot ib first, so don't worry. Uh, the cutscene is going to have you being rescued by Leela, and Ozan's like, don't tell her what happened down here because it's kind of gross. <clears throat> and then once the cutscene ends, before you go up, you're just going to want to pick up anything that you missed, uh, so missing gems, and then you can climb up the rope. Outside, you'll be greeted by Leela and Ozan standing near the next sundial that you need to need to use. And after this dialogue, you're going to want to inspect the sundial and then align it to Skabaras, the symbol of the scarab. You're going to get another long dialogue here between Leela and Ozan and yourself. This is a very story-driven quest, so hopefully you like dialogue. Uh, but this is required to get to Menifus. Pretty fun quest. And, you know, you're, you're almost done anyway. Once the dialogue ends... You realize that you need to run southwest to go rescue Prince Ali because that's the whole point. Enough reminiscing. And once you arrive to the location, you're going to want to talk to Lady Kelly. This will give you yet another cutscene in which Lady Kelly has is basically telling you you need to give her the carrot ib or that she's going to kill Prince Ali. Uh, but I don't want to do that. So eventually you'll be presented with the chat option to provide the carrot ib to Lady Kelly. And you're just going to say no. I don't want to do that. She's like, are you sure? We'll kill Prince Ali if you don't do it. This isn't a game. So you say no again. So she's like, all right, kill him. Leela steps in. She's like, no, we'll give you the carrot ib. Don't kill him. I don't know why. Uh, he's just a prince. And eventually you're going to hand over the carrot ib. Uh, not before the carrot ib is like, no, don't give me to her by possessing a pup, a pep in Haru. But it can't possess Lady Kelly because turns out uh, she's a mascot. So uh, being, a, being a desert god, she's kind of immune to the powers of the carrot ib. So she's going to take the diamond from you and, and sort of be on her way. She's going to trigger this whole like desert storm tornado thing that traps everybody in it. Uh, but she just leaves because she can't really be bothered. So once she walks away, you're now going to have to fight a pep and Haru. Uh, a pep is going to be the one who you're attacking first and Haru is the one you'll fight second. And a pep does have a special attack you're going to want to worry about. He's going to shout Whirling Dervish and then do a spinning Whirlwind Cyclone type move. This can push you out uh, and push you away and deal damage to you. And you're not going to want to run into the edge of the tornado because that will deal damage to you. You can only do 50 damage per attack to a pep and Haru. So there is basically a set time that this fight will take place. So it's not like if you're a higher level, this is faster because it's just slow no matter what. Now, Haru does also have a special attack. You can see I just avoided it there where he's going to try and shoot blinding light down at you. Uh, it is a very clear marking on the floor. Just avoid it. After Pep's dead, Haru steps in. Um, just try and avoid that blinding attack as I just described. It's like a bullseye symbol on the ground that he does.
Once they're both dead, you're going to get that uh, little instance to end. And you're going to want to go start by talking to Prince Ali. Your character is going to untie Prince Ali. And he's like, hey, cool. Thanks for saving me, guys. Appreciate it. We should probably head back to the castle and report to Osman everything that's happened. They're like, yeah, good idea. But then they're like, wait, Ozan, you stole the, the Karadib and it's gone. Maybe don't you come back. So he just rolls out. So you, Leela, Prince Ali, I'll go back to let Ozma know the good and bad news. So in telling Osman, he's like, I can't believe the Karadib is stolen. That was Ozan's responsibility. He's a thief. I, I don't get it. Politics are weird. Uh, but Leela's all mad about it. Prince Ali is, you know, Prince Ali. And, uh, yeah. So once this dialogue a little bit ends here, you're going to get a cutscene to go to the desert. Where a mosquit, Lady Kelly, is talking to the... Who is it? The guy from Menifus? Yeah, the guy from Menifus. Jabari. What? A, he just looks like a villain, you know? He doesn't even look like a good dude. Doing that little hand thing. What's wrong with you? Basically, this is like the lead up to the next the next quest. And she's like, yeah, I got the I got the carrot Here you go, whatever. That cutscene is going to end. You're going to get brought back into the Alcarid Palace. Osman will thank you for saving Prince Ali, and then that's quest complete. If this guide helped, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, join the friends chat, subscribe to my Twitch, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys for watching. Have a nice day.